Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And this is going to be a raid, a Shadow Legends video going over some exciting stuff. We did find out what the new fusion is going to be. I was skeptical that it was going to happen this week. I thought it was going to move into next week, but we we're actually getting it towards the end of the week. And now we know what the next fusion champion is going to be. So I will let you know my thoughts on that. And we'll also go over everything happening in game as well as we head into the end of the week. Let's get into it. Alrighty, and first of all, we've got a little bit of news here in game. Uh, shout out to some really cool people that I've worked with in the past. We've got Nubs, YST, Sorilla, and Layla Fox being featured here in an interview with Sorilla. So definitely check that out and go support them. They're all super good content creators and good people who care a lot about Raid and the Raid community. So uh, show them some love and, and subscribe to them. It's always great when Plarium does stuff like this. There's a lot of really good people in the raid community and they should do as much as they can to uh to feature them and shout them out in my opinion so this is fantastic and definitely uh show them some support here while they're being featured in game but let's get to the hot news of the day now and we are going to be getting a brand new skinwalker legendary very interesting they've been adding a ton of skinwalkers lately i would have almost gone with an ogre and tribes i think that one could really use some love we've gotten uh knee shock recently who's an amazing addition to the skinwalkers we also had ragash added we've had leorius uh just lots of good legendaries added to skinwalkers i think we could have probably went the ogre in direct or something else this time mighty uko i forgot about yeah so skinwalkers uh gonna be getting another champion and it's gonna be launching exactly one week from now on next thursday so let's see what polarium has to say about this new rosal varg champion so an attack magic affinity legendary great for clearing some of the late game content since it's hydra and hard mode dungeons take a look at his unique skill set so the whole kit revolves around speed his passive increases his own speed up to 100 that goes on top of his base speed which is great since all damage scales off of attack and speed apart from that Rosalvar also places increased speed on his allies to provide the speed aura in battle as well and then the a1 boosts his own turn meter by five percent the a2 has a chance of placing a leech debuff on enemies while the a3 can place useful buffs on your allies so okay uh sounds interesting let's pull up the kit and talk about this Okay, so first of all, I will continue to say that I wish we could see the base stats and the multipliers on these infographics. I'm going to say it for the next five years until uh, until we finally get that added because it really makes it hard to talk about champions when they get teased. But hey, at least we can see the kit and we'll do our best. Uh, so we've got the A1 is a triple hitter. Okay, going to be good with the Fire Knight. Anytime I hear about speed and turn meter, I think of Fire Knight. So uh, it's a good start there and fill turn meter to help snowball some turns. Not an amazing A1, but serviceable. Then we've got, okay, it can book to a three-turn cooldown, so that's good. AoE, and it books up to 100% chance of placing a leech, and then heal themselves. Um, okay, it's that's all right, but not amazing. But remember, we've got the, uh, the passive that's probably going to be pretty crazy. Then we've got another three, so that's good. AoE, increased speed and accuracy on all allies. That's really good. That's going to help with progression and especially getting into somewhere like the Hydra, um, Iron Twins, places that you need to hit like these 500 type accuracy numbers. That can really help a lot of players here to get to those numbers. And then the passive increase. the uh, Each increased speed buff placed by the champion will increase their speed by five. Now, I've seen some people kind of randomly talking around in the community this morning thinking that this is for the whole team it is not this is all this passive is only going to be for him so uh you're not going to be getting the the whole team getting more speed based on every increased speed buff that he places because it would be insanely broken but let's look at how this is actually going to be functioning so each increased speed buff placed by this champion so he's going to do that. Uh, he's going to place four to six of them, depending on what content you're in. If you're in the arena, it'll be four of them. If you're in faction wars or dungeons, it'll be five. If you're in the Hydra, it will be six. So let's call it an average of five. So you do five times five. He's going to be getting 25 speed about every time that he does this A3. And it's going to stack up to 100s, which means in about four cycles of him going through his rotation, he is now going to have a bonus 100 base speed so it's on just like a separate bonus from the increased speed buff and all of that so that is an absolutely cracked ridiculous passive 
And not only that, but he's got an Aura that gives the team speed, and he's got an A1 uh, that's going to be basically increasing his turn meter by 15%. So I don't know if there's anybody in the game that can cycle turns like this guy. I mean, 100 base speed, and he's not even having to use an ability to get there. It's just passive value, all like, like just for existing on the map and, and casting your abilities. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, you've got him built for like 250 speed. This means he'll be built for 350 speed just as a passive bonus to his kit, which obviously sounds amazing on paper, but let's actually put this into context. Now, I think, I think it would have been a lot of fun if he had some sort of effect on the team to, to really help you take advantage of that bonus because all that means is he's going to be doing more leech and more triple hit A1s. But they did say that his damage scales with speed. So once he gets to that point where he's got 350 speed, he's going to be hitting insanely hard. This is stuff that we need to know. This is stuff that we need to test on the test server and see multipliers because he could either be kind of underwhelming or he could be ridiculously insane. We still don't really know until we know how some of that stuff scales. Because, yeah, it's super cool that he is um, snowballing turns, but if it's just snowballing turns to do a bunch of weak A1 hits and a bunch of leeches, it's not really going to be as impactful as you think it's going to sound on paper. So, uh, yeah, there's still a lot of grading up in the air with this guy, but I do want to give them credit because it's a cool passive. I, I think there's a lot of fun with that. I just wish it was some bonus to the team. Like... It should be the rest of the team gets 25% of this bonus as well. You know, something to boost up the team. Or every turn this champion takes will also boost each ally's turn meter by 5%. I mean, just anything to help the team with such a cool ability that he has to snowball turns and turn that into something that you really feel within the context of the strategy you're going with, I think would be an opportunity to make him a really fun champion or a lot more fun than just himself snowballing turns. But on the surface looks promising and it looks like a champion that we're all going to want to probably try to get if it's realistic for us because it is definitely a new and interesting and fun passive with the ability to just crank out almost more turns than anybody else in the game. And also, you can rejoice, the Wicked Witch is dead. It's like that scene in uh, Wizard of Oz when, uh, you know, the, the flowers start blooming again and the kids start coming outside to play and the sun is shining. <laughs> We've got the Hydra being fixed. Uh, we're going to perform server maintenance for about 35 minutes. This has already happened by the time I'm doing this video. And the update includes a patch that will return the Hydra to its usual self and several bug fixes for the live arena. There was definitely a lot of bugs in the live arena. Uh, I would say like 20% of my matches were experiencing some sort of glitch or bug or delay or crash or something. So uh, you, you've seen it in, in one or two of my videos where I'm kind of showcasing the live arena. But okay, great that they kind of got that addressed. And it is a dub for them uh, to not double down on the Hydra shenanigans. And I was a little bit worried that Plarium was going to go off the rails and double down and get crazy about the Hydra change to the Head of Decay. But it looks like they're going to be reverting. Now, I haven't, full disclosure, I haven't done a Hydra key yet. I'm kind of working on this video here this morning. But it sounds like what I'm hearing is that the Hydra and your teams that you had built should be performing how you were expecting them to as of last week before they went off the rails and completely flip-flopped the 75% to 25% on the Head of Decay and started absolutely demolishing some of your Hydra teams. Now, as far as the tournaments and events, the most notable thing here, I guess, would be the Champion Chase. This is basically a countdown until the 2X Ancient Shards event that's going to be going on this weekend. And the first two days of it, there's going to be a 10X for Valkyrie. Now, we are going to get a dedicated video out about Valkyrie over on the Champion Guides channel that I do with Scratch and HWZ and Cold Brew for sure, you know, to coincide with this event. And Valkyrie is an amazing champion, and it just kind of depends on your account on if it makes sense to kind of pull or not we talked about it extensively in yesterday's video but you know that's a countdown to when the two x ancients will start but uh, i guess worth noting that there is a fire knight uh tournament going on right now where you can get the 200 coins for 15 25 points and not only that but you've got a drop fever for the savage set that is going to be going on at the same time as that fire night. So it might be worth it to get a few points there in the fire night and, uh, and do a few runs there before that ends. And then under the events tab, really not a whole lot to talk about. There's champion training and, and, and different stuff kind of going on for random rewards. Um, there is an immortal soul stone here at 20, uh, way up at 12,400. So uh, I guess 
noteworthy, but not really something to uh, to really make sure you go crazy to rush and do. So, okay, then what about the shop? So, no, no. Is there anything worth talking about? These Soulstone party packs are never... Yeah, I mean, for high spenders, sure, but for diligent spenders, no. And then this one's borderline. This one's okay. Uh, for, like, most mid-tier spenders, this is worth considering. I mean, I guess, as like... Especially if you're going to be pulling a bunch of Ancients this weekend, I could see it making sense. And this would be a little bit better for an early game to mid game, kind of at least mid to your spender, but it's nothing crazy. And then the Savage, okay. So yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing super noteworthy in the shop. And if you didn't see, I did a dedicated breakdown of the Forge Pass recently uh, over on the website and also here on the channel, provided a spreadsheet breaking that down. I honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do. When it comes to buying this, I'm just going to keep kind of progressing and wait and see. It is definitely a really good set, but uh, yeah, and, and I think it's technically worth it for someone at least in the mid-tier. But I don't know. I'm still kind of weighing my options. For whatever reason, I'm not quite as excited about this one as I was about the bolster set. Probably because I got so bodied. I spent like 450 charms and and bought the premium of the bolster pass and i just got dunked on i got like absolutely nothing worth uh putting together a bolster tank so now i'm a little bit uh now i'm a little bit trepidatious and uh and not wanting to yolo another forge pass after that but anyway we'll, we'll see so that'll do it for me on this one i appreciate all of you have a great rest of your day and i will see you soon in the next video remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily rage shadow legends content and have a good rest of your day peace